So there's more to great sound than great sound. And um, I've been thinking about that phrase a lot uh, following a, a couple of gigs I recently had where uh, there was a sound person running sound for the event uh, or the show. Uh, and that, for me, is the minority of the gigs I play. Most of the time I'm bringing my own sound and or running it for uh, for everybody on the bill. Um, uh, and, of course, in my role hosting open stage, I, I have to run the sound, of course, for, for everybody. Um, so when I'm the artist, you know, one of the things that, you know, just to put this out there, that I do, the attitude that I bring, it's kind of common sense, is you know, just be professional, like uh, be polite, courteous, clear, speak up, but most importantly, do whatever the sound person is asking you to do. Uh, and if that's not clear, then just again, speak up and explain what you don't understand and get on the same page. Let them do their job. Everybody does it a little bit differently, but let them do and get in their groove, do their job the way they're used to. Uh, and then that's the recipe for success. That's the recipe for, you know, that part, that layer of good sound, the auditory experience, uh, working out as it should. And you know, another thing would be just, you know, once they're comfortable, then you can ask for your tweaks about what's in the monitor or what have you. Um, but there's a flip side to that, which is that um, when you're the sound person, uh, you also need to do your part um uh, i guess what i would say is this it's entirely possible to be technically proficient uh achieve a good technical sound but through the mismanagement of the other aspects of your role to damage the performance in such a way that uh, it diminishes the overall quality of what we're hearing and so in that way doesn't matter that the board is set up perfectly because it's not great sound if it's not a great performance, sort of garbage in, garbage out. And sound people have a role to play there. Um, <clears throat> so specifically with that, what I mean is that, um, you know, if you play long enough, you're going to encounter the, the grumpy sound person, the um, person who just is kind of curt or you know, too direct or or just kind of yells at the artists. And um, I understand where that comes from, that, you know, there's a lot of artists who don't do the things I just mentioned and are kind of goofing off or they're naive or they're kind of run around like cats on fire with, you know, everyone's playing everything at once and not letting you focus and they're not listening to you. And so it's a kind of natural response to kind of throw water on that situation and get real direct real quick and let everybody know kind of what's what. Um, the problem is if that becomes a habit, if that becomes like your normal way of dealing with things, then you kind of do it out of order. Uh, you do it when it's not called for and you become that grumpy sound person. Uh, and that's definitely something to avoid. Um, the reason being that... Um, you know, when you put yourself in the artist's shoes, you know, as a sound person, it's tempting to think that, you know, because you're in charge of this one moment, this sound check, and to some extent, sometimes you're in charge of the event. You know, when I'm running the open stage, I'm not just in charge of your sound check. I'm also the host. I'm, run, I'm running the whole thing. But at the same time, I'm in a support role. Like, my job in that role is to support the artist, even if they're naive even if they're goof-offs my job is to support them and give them the best sound i can and the best support i can so that their performance is you know they're set up to to have a good performance and let a good performance shine through to that end i think back to times when like i've been doing this since i was 15 and back then like there would if i encountered a grumpy sound person it would just feel like why, you know, why is this grown up yelling at me? Why, why is this adult, you know, grown up? But, you know, it would feel very much like I'm getting busted by a teacher or something. And they're like, hey, I'm not doing anything wrong. What's, what's wrong? What's wrong? Um, and that, in short, is kind of what went wrong with these 
these two gigs that I had recently is that the sound people were professionals. And in one case, the, the sound we actually achieved was very good quality. But that other part, the support role, that, you know, really you are working for the artist, even if, you know, they don't cut your check. You're working for the artist. Whoever the artist is, whoever's taking the mic right, right then, you need to do what they need. Even if that means, like, you know, the open stage will be people will ask me, you know, will say things that kind of rub me the wrong way. I know they're kind of wrong about something, like, uh, you know, they'll talk to me about feedback or they'll talk, you know, they'll say they need more of this or they, you know, whatever it is, I just give them the best I can, as close as I can to what they want uh, and just try to find a way to make it work. Uh, when we're at this, these gigs, like I was saying, you know, one of them, you know, the, the sound quality was, was good. Uh, however, the, from the moment we arrived from the drop, the sound person was just in just a terrible grumpy mood. Um, just questioning everything about, you know, we, we were booked for this show and we arrived as advertised, no surprises, uh, but questioning our instrumentation, you know, like saying, I, I told the sound person what, you know, what we had, an acoustic guitar, a bass, and a, you know, a hollow body jazz guitar through something like a Fender, a Fender champ. And I was like, oh, I don't like a bass in this room. Oh, does your guitar player have to play electric? And it just was like, if I'd been my younger self, that really would have thrown me. Uh, as it was, it just, while I'm kind of flappable, Gene is very unflappable. So when that stuff continued and ultimately the sound person was like confronting Gene, like, so, so why do you even need that? Why do you even need that electric guitar? It just became sort of a joke and, you know, we let it roll off us. But I've seen all too often uh, when that kind of thing, that sort of unprofessional behavior, sort of disguised as experience sometimes, it can just derail an artist, in which case you failed as a sound person. So, uh, and then, yeah, I could go into the other one. The other one was so ridiculous, I don't think you'll ever run into anything like this that was actually a a sound crew that was refusing to do sound for the bands at this event because there was some sort of, uh, I don't even know what their reasoning was, but uh, ultimately one of the other bands stepped up, one of the other artists, I should say it was a solo artist, stepped up, was a team player, and kind of saved the day. But uh, that was obviously like beyond unacceptable and the craziest thing that, the craziest experience I've ever had with a, with uh, sound professionals I hesitate to say that was the most unprofessional for sure uh, in any event bottom line is to get good sound it's a team effort and everybody's got to be kind of working together trying to help each other artists need to help the sound people you know do their job to set it up sound people need to help the artists support them and make sure that they are not rattling them not taking them out of their headspace not taking them off focus uh, just doing what it takes for everyone to deliver the goods and have those layers of great sound, the great performance that sounds great. All right, so, sorry that was a little bit long, but hopefully that was useful. See you at the open stage.